So let's do a little bit on mass transport operations, which may also have the name of separation processes, separation principles, or anything regarding separation. Or well, I think it's you all know, guys. It's easier to mix E and B rather than to separate A B mixture. This is due to the Entropy principle, it's easier to make chaos, it's difficult to order the universe. So this is a flash, flashing a unit, you just insert uh, the feed and you will have an outlet which is vapor and another outlet which is the liquid. With different percent compositions, which is what we want. Now we have plenty of distillation columns types, but the most common one is the one that we typically see at class. And the important thing here, guys, is that distillation is so complex that in reality we just want to understand the principle behind it and eventually do numerical methods and plenty of software in order to solve those. So no worries if you don't understand that quite. You need to understand the principle and once you understand the principle you can start working with your simulation. So right here uh, before actually starting all this, I just want to show you that, yes, uh, this is a distillation column. It's pretty complex. You have this pump around, we have the feed, we have these columns, we have the trays, we have a rough flux, a cooling unit, we have the reboiler, we have plenty of other extra equipment. And it's not that easy because, well, pump, you know, it goes inside, it's a blade, it moves, and then it goes out. Heat exchanger, you just know that it goes in, after it goes out, and we're done. A valve, you just know it's a little thing here that goes the fluid, changes the pressure, outlet, and so on. But the mass operations or mass transfer or separation principles are a little bit, well, not a little bit more, they're way much more complex. And it starts from the theory. We will talk about diffusivity, fixed law, concentrations, gradients, uh, three, tip, three types of flow or change or transport phenomena of mass transfer. And since the beginning, we start seeing that mass transfer is way much complex. Now, we start with the most basic one, which is single stage separations. And as the name implies, it's one stage. So we get this, this is a flash, we have a feed. We bring it here, we let the liquid settle and the vapor to go out and you get a very rich vapor and a very rich liquid. So that's the first stage. And there's plenty of first stage uh, operations. I just want to give you flash and extraction. Extraction may be very similar. You have the feed, you have the extract, the extract. you just bring them here, let them settle so you have A, B, and here you have C, you take out B, C, and A goes by itself. So you already separated A. Now you can do this and repeat, but this will be multiple stage. We're talking about only one stage. Now that's pretty easy, but of course we need to know the basics. If you're having problem with that, well, you're going to have much more problems with the multi-stage separations, which as the name implies, means there are multiple stages. So if you cannot even model one stage, imagine mod modeling 10 stages, 20 stages, well, that will be, of course, very, very hard. Now, the most typical one and the most exhaustive one, so I wouldn't care maybe to give up 30% of the whole course into distillation, because it's the most important one, the one that will help you the most, and the one that you will be using more likely in the industry. So your course has plenty of distillation. Make no worries, that is awesome. Now about distillation, we have two main courses. The binary, which is essentially A plus B. We go in the feed, you have the distillation column. A goes rich here, B goes rich here. And we technically speaking separate both of them. But that's, of course, not the case in real life. We have plenty of components in real life. Imagine oil. We have up to, at least very easily speaking, 100 
component that we may separ separate. And yeah, typically, once you get the binary, the principles of binary uh, distillation, you will understand the multiple components. And maybe you may even do a tree or ternary, ternary uh, say, system, which is A, B, and C. You will understand how distillation might even work as this. You take A, B, and C, or you may even have A plus B, and a little bit of B and C, and so on. So that's essentially the most important part of the course. Then we start analyzing absorption. Let me clean this up. Absorption and stripping. Absorption is, well, once again, plenty of stages. You have a very, let's say water, very clean water, and you have a gas with a lot of SOx. And let's say it's just an example. Water loves SOx, so we're going to have liquid water with plenty of SOx, and we're going to, since they interacted, all the SOx remains down. The gas goes very clean, almost with no SOx left. That's the idea of absorption. Now stripping is just the reverse. Then liquid liquid extractions. If you have time to see that in your course, you will see that it's not that hard. Actually, I have some examples in my mass balance course. You want to check out those. Then the reflux ratio goes directly to distillation. And well, there's always a reflux style. So let's say for an extraction, you have the multiple stages extraction. So you just go backwards with the extraction operation. I don't want to get so technical. I'm just showing you what's mass transfer about. Then the methyl uh, diagram, it's very important and very useful for distillation, especially binary distillation. You can include reflux and optimal, optimal feed and so on. Now, of course, we know we need to work eventually with efficiencies and number of trays. So that is for, let's say that you, you know due to experiments in the lab that you can only do this at 90% and then you get into the operation and you see that you only get 80%. Well, this is due to the fact that we need to include the trace or the more freeze efficiencies. Optimal feed is also very important for distillation where to start feeding. So maybe, let me clean up this again. Maybe you start feeding here or maybe up here, down here, or maybe even half. You need to know where is the most optimal place to feed now, eventually I will say this is the main core, it was maybe 80%. The last percent will be membranes and absorption, which is uh, very fancy new technologies that are getting very, let's say, common. So for instance, membranes, you can see plenty of operations. The most common ones are those of membranes that will uh, purify water. Absorption, well, you know that Absorption is essentially chemical absorption. Goes here, attaches, reacts, and takes out. Well, many times it doesn't need to react. It may only stay here. So if I tell you, you have activated carbon, well, plenty of material will attach, and then you just remove the carbon and your fluid is fine. And finally, but not least, but probably many courses that I checked out, they don't even include any solid phase separations. Mine did very, very, like a little bit, it's good enough. So it's leaching, washing, very common, actually very, pretty similar to that of liquid extraction, but of course we're talking about solids and liquids. Crystallization, well, you know what's up with that, guys, and drying of solids. Or well, Once again, talking about water or any solvent and solid. So that was the what and the why, which is the most important part is because plenty of times we want to increase or decrease concentrations or purity of products. So if you're working at a pharma junior, uh, pharma company, you need maybe aspirin at the 99.99% .99 separation aspirin. So how do you achieve that? Well, you will need to know plenty of techniques for separation and purification and so on. So that's very important for you. Also, 
we're talking about maybe you know that at high pressures and high temperatures we may have a very pure product but once we go lower with lower pressure and temperature maybe it goes and some evaporates and some stays as a liquid that evaporate will not work imagine if you go for a you know it's a silly example but imagine if you go and buy a one liter bottle of water which is liquid and you just open it and suddenly all the one liter evaporates or maybe 0.8 liters go as vapor and only 0.2 liters remain well that will not be good for you as a client you will hate it and you will never buy that again so yeah it's very important how to specify the concentrations and purity of your products so once again you want to get into product specifications many times you also want to separate toxic components so that's typically with distillation or absorption you have once again the example of SOX you have water or any solvent here goes magic and you get water with plenty of SOX let's say this was a gas from combustion you just get a gas from combustion very low in SOX you may also want to separate on desired components let's say you are have these and you don't want to have methanol and you just want ethanol and water which we can actually drink you can go forward and there are plenty of times that maybe you don't want to do anything of the above you want to recover material let's say you have acetate and methanol you want to separate that because let's say acetate and methanol are expensive or you are you want to be friendly with the environment or whatever reason you want to separate and recover those uh, solvents you can do it with mass transfer operations so that's what I wanted to show you on mass transfer guys it's one of the hardest unit operations courses but it's the most important and the one that gives more money at first hand Thank you.